aren't we having fun? Yeah. All right. So, let's actually compute our first limit. Okay. All right. I do want to, in fact, I, I say it right, hopefully right below here. Yeah. And right here is very important. Okay. This method that I'm about to show you, we're going to build a table of values. Okay. A lot of times people come to class, the first two class periods, they build these table of values and they think I get limits. I just have to build a table. Okay. This tabular method, this building a table, will only cut it for this section and this section only. Okay. In later sections, you may not build a table to tell me what the answer is. Okay. So we're gonna, I'm going to give you other techniques, we're going to learn other techniques, but this table method is just for building an intuition. Okay. It kind of breaks my heart if on the first test, where I've written a test where you don't need a calculator, I see people with a calculator and they're plugging tiny, tiny numbers into their calculator. Okay? That won't cut it. Okay? Even if you get the right answer, I can't give you credit because you haven't shown me you've learned how to work with limits. But for this section, the table method is okay. okay? All right. So we want to look at, I, I kind of forgot to ask the question here. Okay? I sort of forgot to ask the question here. Uh, let me just add it. What is the limit as x approaches a, oh, excuse me, as x approaches 3 of f of x? So here I've got this function. It's a rational function. And we want to find the limit as x approaches 3. Okay? So for those of you who are having trouble, I mean, this is a brand new concept. I'm not expecting you to have mastered it. Okay. As the domain values get close to 3, what do the range values get close to? That's how you interpret that question. As the domain values get close to 3, what do the range values get close to? Okay. Well, today, we're just going to literally plug in domain values that get closer to the point of interest. Okay. By the way, before we get started, what is the domain of this function? We now, we now can answer that, right? What's the domain of this function? What's that? Negative infinity to 3. Negative infinity to 3 and? 3 to infinity, right? It's all real numbers except for whom? 3. three. three. So one way to write it in, in interval notation would look like this. How are we doing, folks? Okay. So I'm asking you to describe the behavior near a point that's not even in the domain of this function. Okay. That's what the limit allows us to often do. Okay. So let's literally do it. Let's go ahead and figure out what f of 2 is. Why f of 2? Because 2 is sort of close to 3. It's sort of close to the limiting value. Okay. So let's get, go ahead and just compute f of 2. Okay, well, that would be 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 15 all over 2 minus 3. Uh, 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 I think we get 7, right? Check me on that. So this gave us 7. Any questions on that? Okay. Now, this class is calculus. It is not about plugging numbers into a function. So I believe that you can all plug in 2.5 into this function and crunch it in the calculator or crunch it by hand, one or the other. Okay. I went ahead and do it, did it beforehand. This will give us 7.5. If we, plug in the val if we plug in the domain value 2.5, it'll spit out the range value 7.5. If we plug in the domain value 2.9, it spits out 7.9. If we plug in the domain value 2.99, it'll, it'll spit out 7.99. How are we doing, folks? Okay. As we plug in, uh, if we plug in the domain value 4, again, we 4 squared plus... 2 times 4 minus 15, all over 4 minus, okay, you'll get, if we plug in 3.5, we'll get 8.5. If we plug in 3.1, we'll get um, 8.1. And if we plug in 3.01, we'll get 8.01. What does it look like the limit is? Yeah, I mean, let's just say this. As the domain values are getting closer and closer to 3, the range values are getting closer and closer to 8. So, what would we write? What 
we would write the limit as x approaches 3 of, here I'll actually write it out, it was x squared plus 2x minus 15 all over x minus 3, right? That was our function. As x approaches 3, this expression right here, the, the output approaches 8. Okay? Now, it's, I think it's very important for us to understand that this is just a guess at this point. We don't know that's actually the answer. We're right, but we don't know it's actually the answer. Okay? So what will not usually work? Usually you cannot just build a table to tell me what the answer is. But for today, tonight's class, it's OK. All right. Now, hopefully you've graphed something like this function before in a college algebra class. Okay. Hopefully you've graphed some rational functions before. This particular rational function has a graph that looks something like this. There's the graph of this function. What does the graph of this function look like? It looks like a line, but what? There's a, yeah, there's a hole in it. Yeah, where's this hole at? The hole is at the domain value 3. What's the range value of the hole? 8. Can I plug 3 into this function? No. What was the domain of this function? All real numbers except for? But we used limits to give the location of the hole. We were able to find, this is one of the tools that, that limits are uh, good for. We were able to find the location of the hole using limits. Okay. More generally, we were able to describe the behavior of f near 3 what did we never do? We never plug 3 into the function. All right. The above method, so here we just said this, the above method is merely just a guess. This is huge for me. Okay. If you at the end of the day, not at the end of the day, that's fine. If you by the end of this chapter think its limits is just about plugging in tiny numbers, into a calculator, you're wrong. Okay? So this is just a guess method, this, this table of uh, values. Okay?